Hi guys. It is a blustery, miserable winter day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization in the last weekend of March. I guess uh, March is going to blow out <clears throat> like a lion after a, coming in like a lamb. It's going to blow out like a lion here in the state of Texas here on, uh, it is Saturday, March 30th. 2019, so uh, I am dealing with the collapse of global industrial civilization. I, I woke up to a crashed computer today. I have spent over four hours trying to uh, glue this computer back together. Don't ever let anyone tell you the collapse of global industrial civilization is not going to be ugly. Uh, you know, just trying to get this computer back up on its feet. But I have made some progress in the past four hours and I've uh, managed unbelievably to uh, get back on to Collapse Chronicles. And I want to thank Alerts Tribes member, Famous Dr. Scanlon. Famous Dr. Scanlon for uh, coming up with today's Chronicle of the Collapse for March 30th, 2019. This is from a fellow named Professor George Mobus, M-O-B-U-S, and I th think I've mentioned this website before, but if I haven't, it's, uh, it's worth repeating. This is an excellent website called Question Everything. When what is happening in your world doesn't make sense, when it doesn't conform, when it doesn't conform to your beliefs about how things should work, it's time to ask hard questions. There you go, the excellent website Question Everything where I can find uh, many, many uh, chronicles of the collapse, and maybe we need to interview Professor George Mobus. Uh, so we're going to go back a few days to the spring equinox. This was uh, George summing up the state of the planet on the first day of spring, 2019, and uh, I'm going to try to figure out how to put the link on here if I can uh, on this computer. But whether I can do that or not, take it away, George Mobus, and tell us about Spring Equinox 2019, climate chaos, and more. <clears throat> I honestly did not expect to witness the end of civilization when I started blogging those many years ago. I wish he had told us how many years ago that was. Though I thought I could clearly see where the trends in energy, climate, social were headed, were heading, and tried to lay out the arguments for why we need to change our ways, I thought that the really bad outcomes would post-date my life. I grieved for my children, of course, but I never really thought I would be witness to the end game itself. Yes, I know exactly how you feel, George. I've uh, been thinking the same way. Uh, I, I thought I was going to actually outlive global industrial civilization and the planet, but like George, I'm getting my own doubts. And do not take that as a sign that I'm joining the near-term human extinction movement. Anyway, we need to get back to George's sermon. <clears throat> now, meaning spring of 2019, I am not so sure. You know, he's not so sure uh, here in, in March of 2019 uh, whether or not he's going to witness the end game itself. In fact, 
I think that recent developments in climate science, energy science, and political science make it clear that we have entered the end game already. Hmm, do you think so, George? Yes. My uh, Italian colleague, Ugo Bardi, who I just interviewed, if you missed my interview with Ugo Bardi, I posted that two or three weeks ago. I had a, a fine interview with Ugo, who he's talking about here. My Italian colleague, Ugo Bardi, speaks of the Seneca Cliff phenomena, where Seneca, the Roman philosopher, who noted that prosperity builds gradually and then declines rapidly as if falling off a cliff. And in my interview with Ugo, he, he describes that in more detail. My own simulation models of civilization show a gradual buildup of wealth with a sudden falling down once the limits to growth are reached. I just did not realize how close to the edge of the cliff we were, or are. <clears throat> we will not be able to save civilization as we know it by any kind of technological magic. The rate of onset of climate change, notice the weather anomalies of late? Yes, uh, we won't get into uh, that looking out my window. <clears throat> and the catastrophic collapse of fossil fuel energies, fracked wells are, f are falling into production as we speak, not to mention the collapse of fisheries, soil depletions, and the insane left versus right political strife all mark the clear signatures of collapse, but this time on a global scale. Hmm. <clears throat> on the energy front, the hope, the hope was that alternative energy sources such as solar or wind would replace carbon-based fuels to provide the kind of power we would need to carry on with civilization as we understood it. That is not happening. Not only is the rate of conversion from carbon to green insufficient, relative to the rate of climate disruption, for example, but we still have no real certainty that these alternatives would ever be able to provide the substitute power needed to keep civilization going. Even in some reduced material form and to provide the energy needed to adapt to new climate regimen and provide clean water, etc. Hmm. It is a race and humanity is losing it. I am calling the game over. I just cannot see a solution that has humanity going on in any kind of lifestyle that we have grown accustomed to in the 21st century. Hmm. It is all about the trends. 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 <clears throat> and relative rates of change. It is all about the momentum. Global warming is baked into the cake at this point. Even if we were to miraculously find a way to extract and sequester CO2 from our atmosphere, we still could not prevent catastrophic warming. We waited too long to react.
Hmm. I have taken as many factors into account as I can. I have processed the data as best as I can. I hope I am wrong in my conclusions, but so far I haven't been, except for thinking I would be gone before all of the shit hit the fan. Go back in the activities of this blog if you don't believe me. I have called it and it is coming to pass. I am very sorry I could not I could not have been more effective in convincing more and more influential people that these systemic issues were coming to a head. My advice is to head for the hills. Okay, but of course, even George Mobus is going, is going to find some hopium uh, towards the end of this reality check. On a more hopeful note, those that do head for the hills may find ways to survive in spite of a civilization collapse. I am not predicting the near-term ex extinction of our species. One more time, thank you, George Mobus. I am not predicting the near-term extinction of our species. Just the loss of technological society. Indeed, such a collapse would be necessary to save some of the biosphere for the future. Hmm, do you think so? Uh, to save some of the biosphere for future e efferescence of new species as has happened in previous major die-offs. What I sincerely hope is that some of the survivors will attempt to preserve knowledge, key knowledge, as in systems science, with which to restart the social process, but the next time, with understanding of the mistakes we have made, like blind belief in capitalism, materialism, and economic growth. I am certain I will not make it through a collapse too old, but I hope some of my offerings in this blog and in my book with co-author Mike Calton do. The principles of systems science hold the key to rediscovering the other sciences. Survivors <clears throat> and their progeny will be well served by that knowledge. <clears throat> A straightforward example is the nature of permaculture. Systems science is built into the concepts and practices treating a self-sustaining community as a system. If you want to enhance your progeny's chance of survival, start a permaculture commune. The descriptions can be found in the archives of this blog. And good luck! Thank you, George Mobus, for uh, that little reality check uh, as I try to, to claw my way back out my own little teeny-weeny personal collapse of global industrial civilization. And now that I have checked in with Professor Mobus, I guess it's time for me to see if I can even put this video on Collapse Chronicles. Uh, that's my first challenge, assuming I'm able to do that. Then I get to uh, get into my broken down gas sucking truck that could kill me any minute uh, as the steering goes out on it. 
and take my collapsed computer to my computer geek to spend how many hours and how much money trying to extend the global industrial civilization in my own life while I still can. Bye, guys.